So, Justin, you've actually got something. You tell us what you're going to talk about. Sure. Um, my session is about you know event-driven architecture. How we oh, can use awesome. uh, make use of you know the the Azure Event Script for your the event script uh, and the your event-driven architecture without having to change anything on your event source and target system. Sounds great. Okay. Well, let's get started then. Sure. Right. So let's get started. <clears throat> Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on wherever you are. So in the next half an hour or so, I'm going to talk about cloud event and how it is useful for your event-driven application development. My name is Justin from Microsoft as a senior cloud advocate, and this is my Twitter handle. So if you can follow me on Twitter, you can see uh, my many talks about .NET. As well and power platform and maybe and so forth, right? So let's get started with um, the term terminology of event. Like if you build an asynchronous system, you should consider either message-driven architecture or event-driven architecture. Those events or messages are actually everywhere around us, but actually, what are those events? in terms of like um, the, our the event-driven system. Um, those are, there are three actually players around those events. So the first one is the event publisher. So event publisher create event. So when you see on the screen here, there's a Raspberry Pi application, which is typical IoT device, and it captures the room temperature around that device. Right? And it builds an event data on the right-hand side of the screen, like a room temperature, room number, floor number, and building name, and so forth. And it emits them. Right? And the event publisher doesn't expect anything, anyone, to consume those event. Uh, event. It just emits those events everywhere. On the other side, there is an event subscriber. So event subscriber actually takes the event from the publisher side and handle them to um, the consume or uh, do some more things. So on the right hand side of the screen, there is a monitoring dashboard here. And the left hand side is actually the event data from the event publisher. So um, the, this monitoring dashboard can work as an event handler and even subscribe uh, the target system. And as you can see here, there are many different uh, the items to visualize on the monitoring system. That implies there are many different events coming in. So I will discuss that later. Another one is that event broker. So event broker is lo typically located in between event publisher and the event uh, the consumer side, event subscriber side. <clears throat> so um, what does that really do is that it really decouples between, you know, it de uh, decouples between the publisher and uh, the subscriber side, so they work asynchronously. Without event broker, they probably um, the tied to each other so that they uh, have uh, dependencies on each other. So uh, the event broker is located in between and event broker takes the message from the event publisher side and deliver it into the event subscriber side and to make sure every event is delivered properly or not, okay? So Azure Event Grid is the one of the event broker services in our Azure services. There are many other uh, event, uh, event broker or message broker services like um, Azure Service Bus, Event Hub, and so forth. But if we are talking about Azure Event Grid here. So let's get back to the monitoring system mentioned in our the event uh, subscriber side. So as I mentioned, we, the, within the monitoring system, they it need to visualize all the event data. By doing so, in order to do so, it must understand all different types of events. That will cause the problems. What will cause the problems? Let's get back to the event publisher example. Raspberry Pi application. So uh, Raspberry Pi device. If I have one Raspberry Pi device and they put on a module to capture the, um, the, uh, the temperature on, in my room. And uh, a few days later or a month later, I put another Raspberry Pi device 
Raspberry Pi device in another room with a different module. Then they publish all the events about the room temperature data, but slightly different event format because they are using different module. So that means each event has its own format. So let's apply this um, the concept into our application development. This is a typical legacy application. So that legacy application, long time ago, they use flat file format, which is a CSV file, like this. And another typical legacy application may use uh, the web service, which is SOAP, and basically it is written in um, the XML format, right? Which is totally different, way different from the previous example. Now, this is um, the another. If, if we are mentioning the modern application and we use JSON object, and this JSON object is a typical GitHub webhook event data, right? And another, another JSON object here. This is a typical Microsoft 365 webhook event data. Both uses the same JSON object, but have different format. Which means if we use event-driven system, each, if we use our, the, our event-driven architecture has a strong dependencies on those event format, if we want to consume those type of events. And that will cause a problem because if a new system is in, uh, introduced into the existing event-driven architecture, and if that new is uh, if that new system uses a different um, event format, well, that may be a nightmare. And actually, many organizations in the real world um, suffers from these kind of problems. So, what if? What if if we have you know the standard a standardized um, event format. So every system or every device uses the standard common way of the event data, common way of event format, then I think that should be fine. And it will actually give us three benefits. The first one is consistency. We can predict what the event data looks like and handle them with minimal effort. And we know the all the event structure. Therefore, we can you know, the access all different um, the systems by building the common libraries and infrastructures and deliver those events to across systems, right? So we can, to, we can increase by the, using the common uh, way of event data format, we can increase the accessibility. And the last one is productivity. We don't need to spend so much time to handle those individual event types because they are all using the same um, the event data format. So from this idea, the concept of cloud event has emerged. So cloud event is one of the, uh, one of the projects backed by Cloud Native Computing Foundation, which is a CNCF. So the cloud event uh, defines the specs about how we define the event data. Also, it provides us with common SDKs written in many different languages, including C Sharp, Java, Python, JavaScript, and so on. So you, if you prefer a certain language, including C-sharp, then you can choose any SDKs and for your, <clears throat> to build your own uh, the event, event driven application using cloud event format. And what does actually the cloud event spec does it for us is that you define context metadata. So <clears throat> you have already the event data and this event data should be wrapped with the metadata as well. So that metadata, context metadata, contains event source, where the event has occurred, event type, which is the type of the event, and timestamp, when the event has occurred, and another extension data specific to the specific event. Okay. And the good thing of using cloud event is that it's flexible enough. So you can adjust this cloud event spec for your existing event data format or existing uh, event data uh, the structure. So cloud events support this kind of um, the protocols and uh, the formats to maximize cross-platform interoperability 
like um, the AMQP or Avro, Kafka, HTTP whatsoever. So for this session, we are focusing on HTTP protocol and we are focusing on JSON object format. Okay. But if you have other um, the event, event broker using different um, the protocols and the formats, then that's totally okay. Just um, use, uh, use this. Right. So as I said, we are using uh, event broker. And, and the, uh, we are using uh, the cloud events data as a JSON format. And this is a typical example of event, uh, the cloud event data. So it consists of two different parts. The upper part is context metadata area, and the bottom part is the actual event data area. And within the context metadata area, it specifies, as I said, it specifies spec version, type, source, um, timestamp, and extensions. And also uh, the data context type. We are using JSON object, so the data content type should be application slash JSON or application slash cloud event plus JSON. And the bottom part is the actual event data. So what I'm trying to say is that you have an event data and this has to be wrapped by those um, the context metadata area. And if we are sending this event data over HTTP, so what should we do? Something like this. So, uh, so there is a host called webhook.example.com and um, the endpoint should be like um, the my resource. Then if we send this event data over HTTP, we put those context metadata uh, values into the request header with prefixed by CE. So CE spec version, CE type, CE source, CE timestamp, something like this, right? And the context type should always be application slash JSON or application slash cloud event plus JSON. And the important thing is that the payload part, the payload part should be the entire event data, including context metadata. Can you see that? The spec version, spec type, and the event data, actual event data form. So this is how we should handle the event data over HTTP, HTTP, right? So this is the, um, the cloud, what the cloud event is. Now, then how does Azure Event Grid implement this cloud event? Actually, Azure Event Grid uh, was firstly uh, starting the service before, way before cloud event has come out. So it has used to have its own format. It, it still has its own format, but to maximize, as I said, to maximize the interoperability, it starts supporting cloud event format as well. But before doing that, before introducing the Azure Event Grid, let's assume that you are building your own event, uh, event broker. So what should you do? With your own event broker, you should, you must implement request header interpretation. Did you remember? So if you have your own event broker, that event broker must have a, a, the feature or capability to understand the CE prefixed request headers. And another on the event payload, event payloads should also um, the include, should understand those um, the context metadata as well. So these two parts must, uh, must be validated before uh, going further. So if, uh, and also this event broker should avoid any other event data if um, those, the CE prefix the request header or event data doesn't meet, right? And your event source should be implementing those cloud event data format as well. But that's cumbersome. So Azure Event Grid topic does everything for you. So instead of using your own the event broker, you just replace it with Azure Event Grid topic. Then that Azure Event Grid topic understand everything. So CE prefixed request header and all the event, uh, the event data, including the context metadata area. All you need to do is that you just um, send an event, uh, send an event from your event source using cloud event format. Now, so this is on the publisher side. Now, back to um, on the other side, the event handler side. If you want to build event handler by yourself, then you must also consider these two things, which is called the pre-flight logic. And this is some authorization and abuse protection. So what that means is that if you want to register your event handler to, um, to Azure Event Grid with the cloud event format, 
then uh, that uh, event handler must register with this authorization capability. So if that event handler cannot uh, handle those authorization, you cannot register uh, your event handler to Azure Event Grid. So this is the architecture. Usually, uh, typically, you have a target system, and the target system and event handler are um, the, on the same machine. So that event handler must perform both authorization and abuse protection. But what if, if you um, the put as a logic apps in between event subscriber, event grid subscriber and target system, then event uh, the logic app does everything for you. So all those pre-flight logic is already done within the logic app. So the updated uh, the architecture might look like this. So there is some event subscriber, event grid subscriber and target system, and there is in between uh, the logic app in between. So this is um, the how uh, the event handler with logic app look like. And another good thing of using as a logic app is that logic app can decouple uh, between the event grid subscriber and target system, right? By doing so, your target system doesn't have to be changed. So it just goes as it is. And even your target system doesn't have to, doesn't need to understand where the cloud event is. Uh, what the cloud event is, where the Azure event subscriber is, they have to, they don't have to know because the logic app event handler does everything for the target system, right? Let's get back to the source side again. I mentioned um, the event source should implement the cloud event. Actually, that's um, the for the new event publisher. So when you introduce a new event publisher, then it's a really good idea to directly implement cloud event format on the new event publisher side, right? So like this, um, the diagram. So um, the event source side here is that you are um, the that event source has implement already implemented in the cloud event format and sent uh, basic event messages directly to the other event grid topic. But there are many other legacy applications already in your organization. So how can we deal with it? In this case, you don't have to change anything about your event source side, right? Instead, you put adapter in between uh, source and event grid topic. That adapter uh, the convert the existing event data into the cloud event format, then it handles it, right? So the updated architecture diagram might look like this. So there is an event source and um, there is an adapter Adapter takes the old event from the source and convert it into the cloud event format and send it to the uh, Azure event grid topic. So this complete uh, diagram, in this diagram, those um, the event source side and those target system doesn't have to change anything. All you need to do is that, uh, all you need to do is to implement adapter for uh, each source application and implement event handler for each target system. So if you have uh, 10 target system, you need to have a uh, 10 event handler. If you have 10 um, these event source system, you only need to do is to implement 10 adapter. But that adapter and that handler only does to change the format. So that's all about it. So which is um, the less simple, I, I mean the more simple, more simple, simpler than before. Right. So let's have a demo, let's have a demo. Throughout this demo, um, I will show you how Azure Event Grid captures the event from Azure resources. Also, how the Azure Event Grid captures the event from external resources. And Logic Apps, how Logic Apps can handle those events. And if you want to build, uh, implement your own event handler, then as I said, you need to uh, implement pre-flight logic, how, how it is working. I will show you how it is working. And finally, I will show you how adapter, how to write adapter for the cloud event, okay? So let's get back to the site. So I have I have uh, the resources in here. There is some um, event grid topic, two event grid topic, one for uh, keyboard and the other one for external resources. So I create um, secrets here. I will create secrets, say, .net conf, and I will say, hello world. So I will say hello world. Then I will create an event here. Then 
Um, I, I will I just created a secret value and that will create an event from the uh, keyword will create an event. So that event will be captured by this logic app. Let's see how it's going. So now, no, not captured yet because it takes time to route it, those events uh, to get to the logic app. So it takes time. So let's wait until it is uh, working. Now, the other one is that I'm going to create another event from the external resources. So there is um, the, uh, so there is um, the GitHub code space I'm work, running. So I will run this application into here. Uh, okay, so once it is started and then we will be able to see um, the, this as, as a functions application to mimic uh, those event, uh, the publisher and event handler or event uh, the converter. So once it's ready, so I will click, I will click this um, Swagger UI, oops, Swagger UI, and it will be showing us uh, into this one. Okay, so this is um, the, um, the Swagger UI using the other functions, and there are four different endpoints here, and the bottom one, event publisher, is that this is working as an event pub publisher with a new publisher, which, which I, we can assume. Then if we click um, this execute button, then it will uh, go here. It will take um, the event here, this part. Uh, okay, so, so there's a breakpoint here and it sets event source, it, set, it sets an event type and it builds an event data and wrapped by cloud event format and send it to the um, uh, other event grid publisher, right? Perfect. So this is what it does. And then once I uh, finish it, it goes into the logic apps. Then yeah, we can see this uh, value here. And I only put those triggers. So if you like, um, you can put as many actions you like for to convert those events, cloud event data for target for individual target system. See? And there's a source, uh, the API slash event slash publish and type is on event of course, and the value is hello world. That's what I did. Like this, the um, external external um, the resources uh, raise an event and it is taken by, uh, handled by as a logic apps, right? Another one. Another one is that, as I said, if we want to build our own event handler, in this case, we, we should, we have to, uh, we have to implement these two things. One is options and the other one is post. Post endpoint is actual um, the event handling side, but before that, we need to implement pre-flight logic. That's what I said. And this is done by options um, the method. So within the options method, uh, we should send two, um, the, two things uh, through the request header. One is webhook request origin, and the other one is webhook request rate. Re request rate is um, optional, but this webhook ori request origin is mandatory. We should put um, this value. So that's um, actually the domain name or host name of uh, where the other event grid or where the event bro broker is. So I just put that ABC here, then execute it. Then, that takes an event handler trigger, takes it, and uh, on option side. So you hear origin value is the ABC, but we are expecting as an event grid. So this is doesn't make this doesn't match it. So it will return method not allowed. So 405 error. So that we get 405 error here. So how can we register this um, the custom event handler on the Azure cl uh, cloud event? I mean the Azure event grid. So use this URL. Let's double check the port is public or not. Uh, still uh, private, so I will check this one is public. So that GitHub code space we can um, use GitHub code space as uh, the the event tunnel. So let's get back to the event grid topic. Then sub add uh, another subscription called uh, let's say the net hunt and use cloud event schema and type to web pool and, and set to endpoint of that um, the GitHub code space endpoint. But here, then create, click the create button and 
it will be sending a request to our Azure Functions application. So here we go. So there's a breakpoint here. And the origin value is that event grid .net, which is because we are sending the request from Azure Event Grid to register, uh, to verify this endpoint is valid as a event handler or not. So this is valid one. So it will be registered. And then once it is registered, it will return on the webhook allowed origin as a response header, right? And then uh, we will handle the request rate to, uh, to monitor the abuse protection. So once it's done, then we have data uh, done the conf, uh, the event subscriber registered here. So we registered. Now we will send another event data from the publisher side and execute, and it will uh, take the breakpoint from the event publisher, send it, and event handler will get this event, right? And this time we have the same endpoint, but using the post method, and it will handle this data, but there is no um, the logic in here, just um, the handle data. So you can put any logic around here for your business. Now, Let's get back to the logic app here because we have two subscriptions, um, two uh, event handler subscribed here. And the one is that um, we just sent um, the event data directly from the external event source like this, okay? Another one is that I think um, this is the one from the keyboard, it takes time, right? It takes time, it eventually arrived, okay? The secret new version created. So this is the event captured from the keyboard that I just uh, created an event, uh, the secret, okay? So now we've completed um, the uh, custom event handler. Now, how to, you know, the make use of the legacy event application as an event source? In that case, we can uh, build, uh, what is it? We can build uh, the adapter or converter uh, <clears throat> using the Azure Functions application. So this is, uh, we are assuming this um, this lorem string is uh, the legacy, app, uh, the event data from legacy application. So let's say that net count, then I will execute it. Then it will come here. So converter, this is the converter and here. So we get this converter and um, identify this is the source from the converter uh, and that this is a type of the converter and uh, convert existing event data into a new cloud event format using this one and wrapped by cloud event uh, metadata and send it to the event grid. So it's done. Now, once it's done <clears throat> here, uh, refresh it, then we just, uh, the logic app received this event data, converted the received data. Right, so source is um, the convert, and type is the is this event type, and data is hello, um, the data conf, right? So we showed um, the all these types of um, the event. Now this is the end of my demo. So almost at the end. So let's summarize. I introduced as an event grid as an event broker, and instead of using your custom event broker, you just use uh, as an event grid for your events worker. And to maximize interoperability, you should implement, you should introduce and the cloud event as a standard format. And also I introduced um, the how event handler might look like using the logic apps and how the, your custom event handler uh, might be doing, has to be doing, is that uh, using the other functions, uh, in custom event handler. And finally, I showed you how the, the uh, event event data converter to the cloud format, cloud event format by by no changing the event source side, right? So, what can you expect adopting those cloud events and as an event grid to your overall event driven application architecture? It's all standardized, so you can significantly lower your maintenance cost and effort. But at the same time, your overall architecture gets more and more complex because you have introduced the um, converter, you have introduced the event handler, you have introduced event grid. So the overall architectural complexity will go up. So therefore, if you are an architect or if you consider 
uh, those um, doing this kind of event-driven architecture system, then you must, you should be balanced in between the cost and complexity, right? So now is your time. Now is your time to try the cloud event on your end. So what I showed you as a demo is a my GitHub repository and visit this GitHub repository and you can try it yourself. aka.ms slash cloud events slash sample and take the, this QR code. And another one is that uh, this is a part of our serverless September event last, uh, last month. So I have already uh, published a blog post about this story. So visit this URL, aka.ms slash uh, cloud event slash article or take this QR code. Then you will be able to see the full story, end-to-end -end story about using cloud event and uh, the other event grid. Right, that's it from me. Thanks for listening. It's Justin. Thanks, Justin. Um, great stuff. Um, we've got a couple of minutes because we've got a recorded session coming up next, which is not going to take up all of the time. So there's one question from the chat. Um, mm -hmm. When should uh, you use, what scenario should you use either uh, Azure Event Grid, Azure Event Hub, or the Azure Service Bus? In? Ah, that's a really good question. Um, service Bus is usually called a message, uh, message broker, and it is used for mission critical. Uh, the messages. Mission critical means that you have to um, handle every single message. You don't want to lose anything. But in terms of the event, uh, event is uh, you are not expecting every single message should be handled. You can, you can you know, lose um, at, at some stage. Right. So this is the, um, the main differences. And event grid and event hub, these two things are slightly different. So like an event grid is a uh, you can take like um, the discrete event. And on the other hand, event top is like a streamed event. So this is a real difference. All right, awesome. Thanks, Justin.